In this video, I'm going to show you how you can program a 2015 Ford F450 with a diesel motor using an Autel Maxi Flash J Box programming device and a laptop. So we have our Wi Fi hotspot here, so we can do this remotely. I've got my laptop and I've got my J Box out. Now the first thing that I do is I go to the Motorcraft Service website and I'll just type in motorcraftservice.com and from there I'll be sure to log in and it always asks you for a little security key to make sure that you're not a robot and once I'm logged in I'll go ahead and do uh, my Diagnostic Tool Support, my software, my FJDS, and then I'll click Download Software, which will bring me to the page to make sure that I have the most up-to-date FJDS software. Now, once I'm here, you can either follow this link here and make sure that you've downloaded everything. So this has the download diagnostic software and installation. This is how you do all of this stuff here. And it will give you the steps. Now I already have a pretty updated version. So I'm just going to say update my FJDS. And I'll just go ahead and run the program. So it's going to download the update from the internet. Now if you don't often come back through here and update your FJDS software. You'll have to go ahead and uh, do a complete download from scratch because it can only update on top of each other. So if it's at 117.04 and you are only at 117.02 and you missed 0.03, you'll have to go ahead and re-update everything. So just go ahead, do that, let it run through its system, and then you'll have to go ahead and close out of Internet Explorer because it doesn't want Internet Explorer open while this whole process is continuing. So give it some time, be a little patient, takes you know a few minutes and once it's through configuring then you can open Internet Explorer back up but make sure that you do not have Internet Explorer out while you are doing this process so now it's just gonna configure which takes a few more minutes you want to be very patient you don't want to get rid of any of this stuff and now you should be able to open up your application of FJDS now after you have successfully updated or installed your FJDS, you want to go ahead and restart your computer and then open the program back up. You'll see here that it says uh, that you need to obtain a license. Now when you click it, it doesn't give you the option to click a little bit lower. It just says activate product license. So what you'll have to do is go to your Internet Explorer and go back to your Motocraft service. And to do that, you just type in motocraftservice.com not a big deal and from here you'll go ahead and log back in because your computer has just been reset and then from here you'll need to go to diagnostic tool support which is in the center of the page you'll click software you'll come back over to FJDS you go back over again and then you'll see where it says purchase software now to actually purchase your software you want to go ahead and make sure that you read through all of this paragraph and make sure that you are, you know, on par with everything that's going on here. And you'll come to this little thing that says click here to continue. So I'm going to buy the two-day FJDS software license for $50. So I'll click here. And I'll log back in. And once you've entered your username and password, you'll just go ahead and sign back in. And here you'll click purchase additional licenses. And I'm going to purchase FJDS for two days. I'll just click one and next and continue through. All your billing information and stuff will be on this page. So once I get through this page, I'll start back up. So now I have my activation code, which I can just copy and I can go back here to my activate production code and it gets it directly from the website and it will bring us to our FJDS which has now been ready to rock and roll so we'll let the software open 
And once it opens, we'll go ahead and start with the actual programming. So now I'll go ahead and click Start New Session. I'll click the check mark in the bottom right hand corner. And I've made my connections as shown. And I'll make sure that my key is in the on position. And I'll turn off anything that's not needed. And I will also make sure that I have a battery tender attached to the truck. So this is our correct vehicle. So I'll go ahead and continue and click yes. So now my computer's communicating with the J box from Autel and the vehicle. And we'll go ahead and update the PCM after it grabs all of the necessary data uh, that it needs to see before we can continue. And you'll hear the fuel pump cycle a few times. Um, and uh, from here, you just have to type in your RO number. So on this vehicle, our RO number is 2234. And it does have our correct VIN in here. This is our vehicle. So now I can go to my toolbox and I can click module programming. And we want to do the powertrain. So I click module programming and programmable module installation, module reprogramming, because that's what we need to reprogram. And we need to reprogram the PCM. Make sure that you follow this protocol here. This does not apply to us. So I'll just click no. And if this is equipped with the kit permanent with the Blacksmooth thing, I'll make sure and click yes. So now the tool is gathering our module data. And it's going through the process. And we'll go through a couple of different VIN verification processes. This is our correct VIN number. It says a later calibration is available. Do you want to program the PCM with it? I'm just going to go ahead for my records and take a picture of this just so I have a secondary backup. And I'll switch the ignition to off, which is zero. And then I'll switch it back to the on position, but not start. And it is now erasing the current data. So this is why it's super important that underneath the hood, you've got a battery tender hooked up to this truck because if your battery dies in your truck or goes below, you know, like 12.2 volts, you could have some issues. So you want to have a battery tender on there. You want to make sure that you're hovering right around 13, 14 volts uh, through the car's battery system. And that'll make sure that you don't have any issues while you're going through this whole procedure. Now the module is reprogramming. Now we're at the end of the module programming. It's asking me to turn the ignition back off. Set ignition to position zero. The module has accepted all data, sent it to the service tool. Next, the service tool will attempt to launch this new software on the module and check for DTC. So I'll click continue. Start the engine or crank for five seconds if the engine does not start. Do not depress the throttle pedal. So the vehicle started. And now it's asking me to turn the ignition off. Now I'm turning the ignition on, but not starting the truck. And the service tool will obtain data from the module. So I'm gonna give it some time to do its thing. And now you're done. So we've updated the programming on our vehicle and I can go ahead now and start the truck up. We have no check engine lights on. All the codes have been cleared. And we'll go ahead and test drive this vehicle, making sure that we do not have the overboost issue that we had originally, and that our KOX sensors are reading correctly now. I'm Blair with Revit Auto. Thanks for watching this video, and as always, happy motoring.